Uh, anyway, wow, so wow, wow. Uh, we have one of our favorite agents. Yeah. I have, gosh, Angela, I don't know how long we've known each other. It's been a long time. Long time. Uh, and Angela, for those that don't know, uh, she's out of our Kierlin office. She's always been one of our top producing agents at West USA. And so we always, when we bring in, and, and it's interesting, I, I love how you kind of, the direction that you took this because we always ask okay like, hey, you know what are your five tips for success and and you shot back and you put together this list and going man <laughs> you know summer's summer's slow and i'm tired because it's been a really busy year and how do we take advantage of a lull in the market and when we're experiencing a lull in our business so you have beat the summer doldrum so angela welcome to the podcast yeah, thank you it's good to have you thank you all right, so let's jump right into it, and we're gonna have you uh, get a little bit closer to that microphone. Um, all right, so I love this. So summer months, it is, um, there's two types of agents out there. There are agents that uh, take off for the entire summer and then take off between Thanksgiving and December because things tend to slow down a little bit. I always think, and, I, and I'm in agreement with you, it's always an opportunity to really get some stuff done. Um, and so you're using this time to enhance your skills and knowledge and a great time to take, adva take advantage of, you know, real estate courses, attend workshops, additional certifications and, and so forth. So what specific things are you doing? So I always take this time to complete every single renewal hour that I need. That I always do that during the summertime because then when it gets busy on all the other times of the year, I don't have to worry about that. So that's top priority number one, just clear up the renewal hours. And then from there, I try to do fun stuff that I want to learn, um, such as dialing, in, negotiating skills. I personally like the creativity side of taking listings, like the staging side, um, things like that. So I always I'm looking for certifications on those types of things when I'm looking to renew. And then I take the opportunity to, to read a lot, read books and develop my personal skills, my personal um, sales skills, my internal skills, just so I keep the momentum of developing who I am. So when I go and present myself to the public, I just have this inherent confidence because I've been growing during this whole time instead of sleeping <laughs> during this mm -hmm. whole time. You know, of our it, it is hard to stay motivated. It's hot and it's a little bit slow. And we all work better, I think, when there's a lot of momentum going on. So we have to keep ourselves motivated. So so we have a lot of newer agents out here because mm -hmm. you, you, you've definitely thrown out some a lot of big ideas and some incredible ideas and, and can be overwhelming because it's easier for you to multitask and identify what things to work on because you've been doing this for so long. And how's your CRM, by the way? <laughs> my, well, because of you, Mike, <laughs> I now have a great I I CRM. Just it underneath the bus. <laughs> I didn't until I was beaten down into submission, but nonetheless, I do have a good CRM and I do send out a monthly newsletter. I have dialed that in um, very well since um, I've grown on that aspect. And I, I and people, I get really good feedback from it. I really, I, it's not salesy, it's informational, it's fun. Um, people really seem to enjoy listening to it, uh, reading it. And so it goes out just once a month. It's really low impact, but it does, it has helped me maintain my relationship because that's obviously what we're in the business of doing in order to sustain and maintain our business. We work on referrals as the best yeah. way to get it and we have to stay in contact with those people and even if it's a gentle newsletter or a nice call those are things that people don't expect even just to say hi i mean i i try to direct myself a little less salesy just try to stay more top of mind to get the recognition but I'm I'm not that great about asking for business, more so just saying, you know, can I do anything for you? Can I mm -hmm. help you with something? Is there any resource that I have that would work? So when I talk to people, they do that. And even like that newsletter, just the other day, I got an email. Hey, how are you? Do you have a plumber? Mm -hmm. and, and that was nice. So I, oh, I know he's going to remember me. You know, yeah. we've sold some rental properties of his. And maybe when it comes time to his, you know, for his house, that newsletter is going to... And, you you know, always want your clients coming to you Absolutely. for vendors. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
All right. So where I was going with the question before I derailed it. <laughs> um, so the newer agents that just yeah. aren't as experienced, what, what would be one of the first things you would have them work on this summer as far as personal skills or, or a certification? Uh, negotiating skills. Uh, really, I think if you're a new agent, the best thing you could do for yourself is read all the, the all the forms. Like, read all the forms. Understand what you're having these people sign because you will have confidence if if you get those forms dialed in. But also, I mean, you are liable for <laughs> for what you're teaching these people. And I d I think once you have more skills on the process and the forms that you're going through, you just naturally have the ability to to want to work with people, and you'll attract more business just by being prepared. So that would be so between me going out there and doing something to meet people. Um, getting a database built, just acknowledging that you, this is what you're doing now and, you know, building up people so you can get them on a monthly drip um, and really preparing yourself in the meantime. And I think forms, understanding those forms and understanding how to negotiate is yeah. key. And, and that's, you know, that's where our skills are. And if we're talking about how do we set ourselves in a unique proposition. I mean, if you say I am a master negotiator, that that's super powerful. Or I've been negotiating these contracts for 20 years. I mean, that's that's something I've learned to say a little bit, you know. I look, I mean, you anybody can do this on their own. Absolutely. You can go to a title company and get this done, but I've been reading these documents and understanding the legal behind these documents and by right of being a realtor, I have an opportunity to explain these documents to you. I feel like there's a lot of value in that. And I can, I'm certain I can save you money by no, by just the ins and outs and negotiating the terms of these contracts Yeah, I and knowing the market data, knowing I, the market data. I mean, the Cromford report, if I was new, I would listen to every single Cromford report every day mm -hmm. <laughs> because she's everywhere all the time Yeah. So you know, and it takes a little while to understand those numbers because she goes really fast. And if you don't understand the mindset of real estate just yet, if you're new, it, it, a, a little repetition with her vast amount of data that the Cromford report puts out, it's super helpful. Yeah. I think that, that, that whole negotiating thing is, is probably the most powerful thing. And I've been telling agents and I've been telling yeah. my team, cause I went out and, recently did a, a certification course and and so forth and yes the knowledge is important but but being able to tell my clients hey uh, this is my designation and and so forth because and especially now there's going to be a lot more negotiating going on mm -hmm. than than ever before and i tell my clients listen you don't even have to like me but when it comes down to negotiating you want me and, <laughs> and, it, and you know so all right yeah. uh so number two, expand your network. I love this because we all know the importance of having our network, expanding our network, adding new people to our network. But boy, when we get busy, um, that's one of the first things that goes because right. we're showing homes, we're listing homes, we're doing this, we're doing that. And, mm -hmm. and the summertime is a great time to go, okay, let me take inventory of my network. How do I grow my network? But what are some of the things you focus on with your network? So that is true. I mean, this just doesn't happen when you're when you're working with a lot of clients. So what I do is I pay somebody to do that. <laughs> you know, I pay somebody to kind of manage my database and I I I, I am responsible for acquiring the leads but i do i do hire out to send out the um newsletter and to send and to keep that database maintained uh, that is something that after i got my great database going thank you mike i <laughs> i was like what am i doing with this this is not helping me at all and i realized that's just not something i'm going to do a couple things in business i realize i'm never going to do for myself is my accounting my bookkeeping and this uh, database performance or drip campaigns and i don't i don't it's not necessarily something i necessarily want to spend my time learning i don't want to learn the ins and outs of how to work my database i i just rather set a small budget aside and have somebody do those things for me yeah regardless of who actually does them mm -hmm. um 
the reality is, you know, we we make it human nature makes it difficult to succeed in this business because we think of going and meeting people as work. We think that, oh my gosh, you know, I wake up every morning and what's my job? Well, if you're a C or an S, you're a retail salesperson. You're going to go to those environments where the consumer comes to you. If you're a driver or an influencer, that's the other story. The other side of it, you're going to want to go out and meet more people because it's just normal within your you know, repertoire who you are. So I think this is really important because once you know the forms, like you've said first, you read the forms, you get to know your documents, improve your skill. Um, then you need to go out and the best people to practice your skill on are people that aren't yet maybe necessarily in the marketplace, but you can still have a conversation with them. And then also consider about uh, finding out what everybody in your sphere does for work and then start referring some of your leads in business to them. It's a great way to obligate them to want to do business back with you. But I like the fact that you're focusing on uh, on engaging and growing the business because that's the low hanging fruit and it's right there and it ha it produces the best results. Yeah, so you have oh, to get ahead. out. No. You absolutely have to get out. Yeah. And and whether it's you, probably the best approach to doing so is to getting out and doing the things that you really like because then organically your relationship bill right my thing is yoga or something fitness and i i meet a ton of people in all of those classes and we don't necessarily i don't ask them for business but they certainly know upon talking what you do with your day and, and what you spend your time doing and it's just much more fun and and it it's it's just a way that your energy stays enthusiastic because it, it is a lot of work to try to build relationships if you're acting it out if you bring your authentic self and and you meet people through authentic means that that will probably that will be more successful that's a super I think, huge yeah piece of the, anyone who's new to real estate is listening to this that is that the top that's what yeah. you focus in on because you are it's exhausting talking yes. to people all day long but if you're doing something you love to do so if mike weinstein's in a burger bar or a bourbon restaurant he's gonna talk to you for four hours <laughs> yeah. but if he's at a yoga studio he's gonna pass out on the floor <laughs> so knowing what you love and being wow. able to communicate with those individuals wow. I, I think that's fantastic but it also makes the whole sales process more fun because 100%. you have fun hanging out with these people, right? Yeah. I used to show property when I first started. I'm like, ah, I should have won an Oscar for that. <laughs> you know, you're, just, you know, yeah. you're just so tired and you're like, wow, oh, that was really a performance. And then I adjusted. I said, why am I trying to do that? So hard, yeah. yeah. No. Well, I, I, think th I think this is one of the, the key points because yeah. it's a very hard thing for real estate agents to spend money. Uh, I don't know why, but we are inherently a cheap group of people. <laughs> we just are. And um, and so we want to do everything ourselves because we want to, you know, we want to save some money. And we always have a saying on our team, you know, that, you know, when we talked about last week, but you always double down on your strengths and outsource your weaknesses. You know, I'm, I'm with you. I, I hate I hate bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. I hate accounting. I hate all of that stuff. I don't ever have to worry about it because I've hired someone to do that. And same thing with having a transaction coordinator. And I think for, for me, for you, the biggest thing is now hiring someone to, because you can expand your network. You can, not having to enter all of that stuff, not having to manage your CRM and your network and so forth allows you to just then expand their responsibilities and it becomes a machine because nothing's worse than getting up early in the morning. Like I got to, I gotta hit my network and I gotta hit my CRM or you know, before you go to bed, do it. Just knowing that you have someone to do it. I think it's just it's it will it just frees up time to allow you to do the things. You're gonna get more business doing yoga <laughs> right. than you are sitting behind a computer sending out a newsletter. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we expect people to hire us to service them. You know, it's it's the same difference, right? We hire an accountant to do our accounting. All right. So focus on marketing and branding. Do you spend time? I mean, it sounds like it, so you're spending time to like sit back and go, OK, what's working? What's not working? How do we how do we modify the brand and our marketing strategies and walk me through what you're doing right now during the summer when it comes down to marketing and branding? So for me, I just, I'm, I'm revamping 
everything that I have going on. So uh, somebody who's starting out could start out fresh. I had to rebuild my whole website. Um, so I've been working on that a lot. I've been a little bit lacking on the social media side. So I, when it comes to that, I personally get a little overwhelmed, which is why I hire it out. But I've also been a little bit um, reluctant to send a whole lot of video out there. I thought that was an excellent point. I mean, there is there's an attention span issue, and video gets the job done um, probably more so than anything else. So that those are the things that I intend to fix over the summer. Uh, get on a, just a couple more social media platforms. I mean, even if you haven't started, just try to get on one, just, just get on one and it, <laughs> you'll be better off than none. And I intend to fix, you know, pick my favorite one, right? I intend to do an Instagram, right? It really revamp my Instagram because I, I like the fun side of um, decor and remodel and, and, you know, pointing out things like that versus I'm a little less on the salesy side and the mm -hmm. numeric side. So for me to be more authentic and which is, a, that's a great platform for things like that. Instagram is a, is a good one. So I intend to revamp that, but I, I really feel like to stop the overwhelm, you should just focus on maybe one or two that you really like and go and go from there. You know, you can tell she's already internalizing this because in the previous question, by mistake, when she was talking about your newsletter, yeah. you said video newsletter, and then you stopped and you changed it. So you, you got video on the brain. So that's a good thing yeah. because internalizing that. But once you said that, I thought I kind of gasped. I was like, oh, what a great idea. Instead of sending maybe even not to you, but I'm just saying someone could mm -hmm. instead of say, se sending a, uh, a newsletter per se, what, what about a you know, minute and 30 second, you could probably recap a whole newsletter in a minute and 30 seconds, right, right. you know, to your point. And that would be fed in the amount of cons consumption they're looking for. Right. And maybe people don't like to do video because there is a shyness factor there. You really have to show up, yeah. you know, at your best, to your best self, to, yeah. you know, when you're using your voice, it's one thing to write something and it's another thing to show up in pictures and be well-spoken. So it's, there's a, probably a reluctance for a lot of people that way. I, I think the mistake that agents make um, when it comes down to social media is time management of these things. It's I, for me. Yeah, you could say, hey, just go ahead and pick a social media platform and throw some stuff up there. Um, I think it's a, I think it's imperative to to one really um, strategize because uh, you, you were just talking about it. You, you're, you're not going to get on social media and just start hammering people with social media, you know, with, with real estate and so forth. You're going to talk about the core. You're going to talk about yoga. You're going to talk about the fun stuff, but that's, that's a strategy. You know, your strategy is to get people to know you, like you be entertained by you. And that always leads to other things. And I think there just needs to be a lot more strategy put into it and scheduling things out. Like you, if you're going to start, you can't stop. And yeah. we don't oftentimes yes. put that. I try to put that into to my weekly calendar of, okay, because if I don't, I get busy. And then when you lose that consistency, mm -hmm. it's hard. And I feel, I feel like when you have a lot of experience and a lot of credentials and a lot of certifications and education, and you, you know how to navigate through this process so well. And after doing that for 20 years, you know, that's dialed in. So I can preface myself a little bit more on the fun stuff mm -hmm. and, and follow up with, and you know, I, I come to you with credentials. So, you know, we can do both. You can, we can pro take this process in, in both directions and have a little bit more fun with, with yeah. them. All right. Number four, nurture existing relationships. Obviously something that should be done year round and we should never give up on. But um, I'm, this is one of the things I think I do pretty darn well. When I do have a lull, not, not necessarily just the summer, anytime I have a lull or if the night before or I wake up in the morning and I look at my calendar and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I should go golfing. Ah, nah. uh, <laughs> take a client take, with you. <laughs> you know, well, that's, that's what I would do. Then I go through and say, hi, who, who can, who can, who can go golfing today? But I get excited about those days because then I know that I'm going to spend a lot of hours, uh, on the phone, texting, creating video text, whatever the case is, 
just, you know, nurturing those relationships and going back through the list of people I haven't talked to in a while. Yeah. And then talking about market updates. I mean, I, I'm i just telling every agent, go if you don't know what to talk about right now, I would be calling people up and asking if they're familiar with what's going on with the Department of Justice and the National Association of Realtors and the changes. I'm telling you, you're going to have a lot of conversations. Yeah, yeah that's that is a good approach to actually take it in a positive Possibly. Yeah, because because if you're not having these conversations with people mm -hmm. and then you reach out to them and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to look at homes and I just signed a buyer broker agreement with another agent, you're out, yeah. you know, and you, you just got to. But anyways, I love this nurturing existing relationship. The, the positive, if you look at it from a positive light, it, it is about restructuring the way you do business. Like we were talking the other day about, well, maybe you have to have that initial more formal meeting with the buyers now, mm -hmm. um, you know, weed them out, may, hold them accountable, make it a bit. I mean, we, we, maybe we've been a little loosey goosey and that document, the implementation of understanding how we get paid and how that's going to impact the way we work together will change the dynamic of how people show up to the buying process. And, and it, will probably make it more successful. I am notorious to, uh, I have wasted a ton of time with a lot of people who just blow you off or, you know, have wasted your time and they're not very serious. And you get to revamp it as a structure of the business now. You know, you don't just meet somebody and show them a hundred properties and then they, you know, go back to Minnesota. It's like, look, you know, <laughs> we, we're, we do business and this is how it is. And so you, I, I'm going to have an initial meeting with you in my office and then we'll see, you know, where you want to go from there about looking for properties in the future. Yeah. All right. Number five, uh, set clear achievable goals. Um, I love this because um, we'll, ha we'll have a lot of top producers and you know a lot of people and we'll talk about goals and, and so forth, but everybody takes their own approach and, and how they determine their goals, how they set their goals, how they, how they, you know, take inventory of their goals. Walk me through your process. Maybe how how the process has grown. Do you remember day one of real estate? <laughs> <laughs> I I do actually because it was in the boom of the market and it was incredibly hard to work with buyers. So it, it's unforgettable to try to get a deal done. And I my goal then was just to get one, <laughs> just just to get one. You know, you'd write ten contracts and they wouldn't go. Now my my goals are based a little bit more around volume, right? I have an intention of a, a number of homes that I, I do w intend to sell. Um, and like everybody else, I, my revamp of the goals for the next half of the year will be not volume with buyers and sellers. It's probably volume more so with working on listings because that mm -hmm. will be one way to weed more gently into this transition. Obviously listings are always great, but so as part of that, I know that I have to go and revamp my listing presentation. I don't think it's that great right now. And and to if I'm going to be more competitive that way, as that will be my year end goals is to to work on the listing side. I, I that's part of my rebranding, and that's why I'm trying to get some more out there. And and I think the video is probably a must. You know, I I uh, I remember my first day in real estate, yeah. good old new home information center days, and. I got done with uh, real estate school and mm -hmm. and I showed up and I realized that um, real estate school didn't teach me anything. Right. Right? right. And I was thinking, I remember sitting in the bullpen. Um, I remember vividly and I remember thinking to myself, I hope to God nobody walks in right now and asks me to help them buy or sell a house because <laughs> I got no freaking clue what I'm doing because real estate school taught me nothing about the practicalities of doing <laughs> right. real estate. So I remember day one. You need a mentor. Yeah. No yeah, doubt. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that would be, I, I'm glad you said that because I think that's, that is part of when you're doing this business as long as we've been doing and been as, and been as successful and in, in for so long, goals is an easier process to identify, establish, maintain, monitor, and, and so forth. When you're brand new into this business, it is a very difficult process to really establish goals. Your your thoughts on a mentor and a coach, team, whatever the case is for our newer newer agents. I think I think everybody should have a mentor. 
I really do. I had a, I had a mentor when I first started and it was priceless. I, I think between understanding how to get through the contract process, there's mm -hmm. nothing better than having somebody by your side that knows all the documentation. That That's for sure. But even just, I, I palled around with somebody just watching them show properties. I mean, I spent a lot of time figuring out how, the style of showing properties, the organization, you know, how you put the planos together, you know, how you meet a client, how you set up a property. There's so, there's so much art to it. Um, and, and there's, and then there's a lack of art to it too, but it is the art to it that helps you solidify the deal. Whether just the, even the my, most minute thing, you know, is that front door clean? You know, how do you present your listings? I mean, are your listings clean? Is your front door clean? Did you turn the lights on? Does it smell good? Those are common sense things to us, but maybe somebody who's never done it don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't have those ideas at the top of mind. Right. And how do you take a buyer out? How do you organize your planner? How do you even schedule a showing times? How much is it going to take them? How much time is it going to take them to look at 600 square feet or 6,000 square feet? How do you do that? Those two styles of showings are so different. Right. Is the agent going to meet you there? No. If the agent's not going to meet you there, you better have read that plan out. Because what I what I've really come to learn is people you can't just send out a listing. You you should really like hit key points. I'm sending you this listing on the MLS because you said you were looking for this, that, and this, and this plano meets that criteria. Are you interested mm -hmm. in looking at it? We I think sometimes as old agents, we set up auto searches and we just let them fly and hope that that buyer has the attention span to read it. No, they're going to click through the pictures, but they may have missed. Oh, you know, that was like, you wanted a clubhouse. That house had that's like one of the only communities here that have a clubhouse just saying you know you might want to look at that detail so you're we so, should be responsible for telling them those things you're like, such a better agent than me <laughs> Jeez, I, feel, dang. Was, I don't do any of that, that stuff, was amazing stuff. Yeah, it was. That was cool. all right angela really good stuff uh really appreciate it um told you this would be easy yeah thank you you made it easy now. i need to quickly apologize to mike for the yoga joke apparently that was over the line i'm getting some text messages and messages <laughs> Um, so Mike is really good at yoga. He wouldn't pass out on the floor if he did yoga today. No, I, uh, I'm, I, should we I put would, him to the test? I mean, I think we should Angela. That's a great call. Yep. It, it's always about getting back up. It's not about getting to the floor and actually doing some of it. It's now I got to get back up. Understood. All right. We'll leave everybody with the quote of the day. Efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Go out and sell a home.